Brad is kind. Brad is smart. Brad is funny. Brad is good looking. And Brad is shibble, chivalrous. I'm sorry, Brad. If you, I told you that I couldn't read your handwriting if you wanted me to read this. So, as I mentioned, my name is Matt. I've been a friend of Brad for about seven years. But before I begin, on behalf of Brad and Jamie, I'd like to thank everyone for making this trip, especially those that came from far distances, Chicago and other states. On behalf of myself, I wish a lot of you guys would have stayed home because this part would have been a lot easier. Uh, when Brad asked me to speak at his wedding, I felt honored. But he also made me promise there was a certain few subjects that I wasn't allowed to bring up for fear that I might get him in trouble. So, as a man of my word, I was going to keep that promise. But if anyone is interested in that list, they're welcome to come, they're welcome to come by and read it. <laughs> Brad told me tonight that if I did a good job, I'd be allowed to speak at his next wedding. So, so here it goes. I met Brad on um, July 30th, 2008. Well, um, the day before I moved to Tampa, I was actually buying a bed. And not a bed that you would find at beds at a Haverty's or Rooms to Go, but actually a uh, huge mattress, which I thought at the time was going to be new. So I showed up to his apartment, and he showed me the bed. And I said, okay, I'll take it. And he said, I also have a free microwave and TV to throw in too. I said, wow, that sounds great. He seems like a really nice guy. Little did I know he was moving that day and was going to throw it in the trash anyways. <laughs> so I told him I'd be by tomorrow with a truck to pick it up. And he said, well, that's not going to work. We need to move it today, but I'll be happy to help. I said, okay, that sounds great. Let's move it. So we carried it down three flights of stairs. And we get to the parking lot and I'm looking around and I asked him what, you know, I was looking for an SUV, a truck, something, you know, to put a bed in. And he says, you see the two door BMW over there? He goes, we're gonna put it on the roof. And I thought he was kidding around because I had no idea who he was. And so we put it on the roof and I asked him what we're gonna do to tie it down. And he said, well, we're just gonna roll down the windows and hold it with our hands. Uh, I said, oh, okay, that works. Um, you know, he said, it's not that big of a deal. We're only going four miles in rush hour traffic in downtown Tampa, but, you know, we'll, we'll make it happen. So 30 minutes later, we get the bed dropped off. Everything's fine. We're on the way back, and he's telling me a little about his career. And um, most of you guys know him. Brad works with Scott Train. He's been involved in the, the financial field for quite some time. And I was working at Dillard's at the time, you know, uh, folding T-shirts at the mall. So I said, wow, that sounds like, a, you know, pretty interesting. What can you tell me? I want to make some money. And he said, well, you know, one thing I gotta tell you, pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered. As long as you follow that approach, you'll never lose any money. And I said, okay. I, I didn't know at the time it was a, straight from a Gordon Gecko movie, but it said it works. What can I go ahead and start investing in to make some money now? And he said, well, I've never lost any money yet, but there's this great stock. It's a very reputable company. It's been around 100 years. And I just, you know, put most of my life savings in it. And he's like, I've never had a bad trade. You always gotta know when to close the position. I said, okay. So he's talking about 20, 30 more minutes, going on about the company. And I said, you know, that sounds like a great idea. I, you know, if I didn't borrow $150 and buy a used mattress for me right now, I'd probably go ahead and buy some. <laughs> well, as time comes, about two and a half months later, by the way, for those of you, I don't know if any of you have ever heard of General Motors, they filed chapter 11 bankruptcy about two months later. <laughs> and I said, who is this guy? Well, fast forward, Another seven years, um, Brad worked to bring it, Brad worked together, um, and brings me here today. There are some things that you know I shared in my life, um, some, a lot of good times, and Brad's always been a part of them. Sometimes when you fall off, you know a certain path. Brad was always the guy that, that kind of put me back on that path and picked me up. So. One thing about Brad that, as um, most of you can mention, I'm sure every single person in this room at some point in their life has needed his help for something. I know I have, so Brad's always been the guy that's kind of been there for that. And um, another thing that I noticed about Brad was the, fact, um, the relationship he has with his mother, Judy, and his grandmother, Marion. Since I've known Brad, I don't ever remember him missing a day where every week he takes them to dinner on different days. 
And that really says a lot because I know a lot of people. So if there's any indication of how a man's going to treat his future wife, it's how he treats his mother and his grandmother. So I think that if, you know, if I were to raise my son half as good as a man that Brad is, I'd feel I succeeded. Now, I met Jamie about three years ago, November 5th, 2011, at Shepherds. <laughs> and my first impression of Jamie was, wow, this girl's too nice. I said, she's trying to win his friends over. <laughs> Fast forward almost three years to the day, and she's still the same nice person that I met that day. And as anyone knows, Jamie's never had a bad word to say about anyone. So I would wish you two good luck, but I know you don't need it because you guys have each other. And thank you for letting me be a part of this.